you have a suggestion, Maureen? Well, because last week was school vacation week, you've got a very compressed schedule. Typically, the planning board tries to hold a site walk before the applicant is obligated to make a new submission. Um, technically, the submission for the May 17th meeting is this Friday. Uh, obviously, we'd probably push that back to at least next Monday, um, in which case the question is, are you willing to do it on Saturday, April 30th? Which might be too quick for most people, but that would at least give the applicant the benefit of your comments at the site walk before they're obligated to get a plan in. Otherwise, you, you, you've got to look at another weekend. Or Sunday? <laughs> Saturday work for most okay, people? For me. What are we talking about time wise? Morning? Usually you hold Generally. those in the morning, they usually take about an hour. Is that a possibility? I mean, that it's light enough no. at the end of the day. If I don't know what people's work schedules are. Perhaps you could do it at the end of a work day. You could even try to squeeze it in 4 or 5 o'clock on a Friday. It's, it's your call. I'm easy. That's my I'm fairly flexible. I will adjust the uh, 5 o'clock on a Friday would be better for me than 9 o'clock on a Saturday. But I could make more. Liza? I could do five on Friday. Yeah, or Saturday afternoon. Saturday afternoon? What? Does Saturday afternoon work? Is that worse? <laughs> it's worse. <laughs> <laughs> Friday at five o'clock? How about you? I can. I'm, I'm looking at Mr. Olfein. I'm not saying a word. Unless <laughs> the options are difficult for me. I, I think five o'clock on Friday would be the most appealing. Liza? Yeah. yeah. Five o'clock on Friday. What about? Can you all have somebody there five o'clock on Friday? Uh, yes. As in. Two days from now? It's in April 29. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or Thursday? It's being responsive. <laughs> Is it tomorrow? tomorrow. Even? And so your next submission date would then be, we can extend that until? I, why don't I talk to the app and see what's realistic? And okay. What we're going to do is instead of make it Friday, try to make it as early next week as possible. Okay. And is, is this sufficient notice of the site walk to yes. meet the notice requirements? Yes. Okay. And you want to make an agreement on where you're going to meet on the site. Is there parking? Yeah. You yes. can park on the side of, I mean, is they can park on the side of the Golden Ridge Lane. Right. Okay. So I, that's I have it on good authority. You can park there. Just don't stay too long, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this Friday, two days from now, 5 o'clock. And where are you meeting? Are you meeting at the end of the existing Golden Ridge Lane, or do you want to meet at the beginning of where Golden Ridge Lane intersects Route 77, since you can see? I would think we would want to walk the whole road, so why don't we meet at the beginning? Okay, so having that established, the next question is whether we want to do, whether we want to go ahead and schedule a public hearing the next opportunity for that would be at our next regular meeting, May 17th. I'm getting a lot of nods. Okay, anyone want to make a motion then <coughs> to that effect? Victoria. Okay, motion to table. Mm -hmm. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Golden Ridge Lane LLC for amendments to the previously approved Golden Ridge subdivision to add another lot at the end of Golden Ridge Lane be tabled to the regular May 17, 2011 planning board meeting, at which time a public hearing will be held. Do I have a second? Liza? Any further discussion? All in favor? All right, that's
have all six of us unanimous, no opposition, no abstentions. Thank you very much. We'll see you Friday. Okay. <laughs> and members of the public are, of course, invited to the site walk on Friday. The next item on the agenda is Rosewood subdivision amendment. Joe Frustacci is requesting amendments to the previously approved Rosewood subdivision to create another lot at the end of Rosewood Drive under section 1625 subdivision amendment. Is someone here to present the application? Please start by introducing yourself. Madam Chair, members of the board, my name is Rick Light, and I'm an engineer uh, with my new firm of Light Environmental Design. And with me tonight is uh, Mr. Fristaci, the applicant. And, uh, I'm sorry, with you is? Mr. Fristaci. Ah, OK. Thank you. So if you'd like, I could give you a brief introduction, background, and a quick summary of the project. Please do. Like. Um, just a little bit of history. The, the Rosewood subdivision was approved back in 1992. It's a five-lot subdivision. It was later revised in, in 2001, and again revised in 2003, as stated in my cover letter. And the application before you is simply to take what is currently lot four of that project and divide that lot. That lot is 64,026 square feet and divide that lot into two, uh, two lots, which would conform with the RC district of a minimum of 20,000 square feet. So as such, we're before the board to request an amendment to the previously amended subdivision and also a private access waiver for reasons which I've explained and I'll, I'll go through, through here. Um, essentially, the, the, it's a pretty simple process. Um, the, the lot itself is on the end of Rosewood Lane, as you can see. And I apologize, is there a pointer up here that you bring a pointer? Actually, I don't know. One in the red bag. Is there, is there one I can be helpful for? Yeah, hold on. So the current lot, this is the end of Rosewood Lane, which is about a 600 and some odd foot long private way, 50 foot right of way, 18 foot gravel way, which comes off of Woodlawn. And this is the current lot right here, which is about 64,000 square feet. What we're proposing is to create lot 4B and 4A, and this is the T turnaround, so that such that 4A has 140 feet of frontage. Lot B only has 50 feet of frontage at the very end of the road. And hence the request for a private access waiver uh, for the board to approve one lot on a private way with 50 feet of reduced frontage. The current frontage, as you're aware, is 100 feet in the RC district. The project, what we focused on here, the current lot is, re is actually Mr. Prestosh's residence. This, this lot is built, this home is built, the driveway is built, the shed, the garage is built. And it's a pretty large lot remaining at 43,000 square feet, even after the division is proposed. What we've proposed here is, to, is a new building lot with a, a conceptual building shown on the plan that would have a building in here meeting applicable setbacks and a driveway into the building. And also, I'll talk about in a minute, is a driveway curling around and actually utilizing the T turnaround uh, for part of the driveway. And I'll talk about that in a second. And behind the lot, the lot is partially wooded now. The lot would drain towards the rear of the lot. And we're proposing, because of the steep, the slopes there, is to put a stone wall in behind the lot, create a swale, and get to divert the drainage along from 4A to 4B. 
and the water currently goes through an ex or a drainage easement, excuse me, it's on the town, there's a town property right here, which then drains down to Mitchell Road. And, um, and that provides a little bit of rear, rear lawn to the lot as well, and it also diverts the drainage, which currently everything sheet flows this, in this direction now, it would take the drainage and actually divert it away from the abutters and put it into this drainage. It's actually, I don't know if it's a formal easement, but it's a strip of land which is part of the town's parcel, which is an open space parcel which encompasses this lot. In one of the previous applications, you may recall, um, Mr. Fristacci had given uh, five, I think 5.3 acres of conservation land which completely surrounds this lot and that finger here is a part of that conservation land, I believe which goes down to Mitchell Road where there's a culvert. The septic system, the lot is serviced by public water up to a point about right here with an eight inch main and the service to the existing house is a one inch service. And at the time when that was done, there was ledge found in here and so they, they stopped the water line right in here somewhere and we're proposing to service this lot with another single service from the existing water main. The site would be serviced, of course, by septic system, and there's been a septic system designed and approved by the code enforcement officer, Mr. Smith, by Albert Frick Associates in that location right there. The project would be subject to a road maintenance agreement, which currently exists for the Rosewood Drive, and it has been amended. Um, and in terms of meeting open space requirements, the applicant has uh, provided in our previous sketch plan that he would contribute to the fee in lieu of to meet the open space requirements. But as a reminder, there also is this area that's surrounded by that 5.3 acre open space parcel, which in your application, I wish I had a, a, a PowerPoint slide, there's, an, there's a, a, a visual in the application which shows the aerial. This is completely surrounded by open space, which is very nice. Um, and also to meet the uh, affordable housing provision under zoning 1974, uh, excuse me, um, they have, Mr. Fristacci has designated, uh, will designate lot three of the Blueberry Ridge subdivision, which is a subdivision just uh, off the edge of the property. And that lot has already been designated through that subdivision process an affordable lot. And he's proposing that lot three in that subdivision meet the affordable uh, requirements affordable housing provision requirements. So again, we're in front of us, the two things we're looking for is an amendment to the previous subdivision and again, uh, the uh, approval of a private access waiver for the reduced frontage on lot 4B. I think that sums up the presentation. Anyone have any questions before we open the public comment period? Yes. I just want to make sure I understand um, the driveway going across what is currently set up as the deadhead turnaround for fire apparatus, correct? Mm -hmm. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes, and thank you. I, I was going to come back to it, and I did, so thank you for bringing that up. And, uh, and it shows that coming in as a circular driveway, and then the center of that drive is, the center of that is on both the lot and both on the public, on the public right of way. So who's responsible for maintaining the section of the driveway that goes through the deadhead and who's responsible that isn't actually on the homeowner's property? That would be, that's a very good question because it's, a, I'm glad you brought me back to this. The T turnaround right here, the 50 by 40 turnaround, um, what we propose is the driveway, which doesn't show up well, and I apologize about the print, it doesn't come up that well. There's a circular driveway. The turnaround part is 24 feet wide as per the town standard and that turnaround would be incorporated into the driveway that would be maintained by the homeowners association through the homeowners agreement the part where the driveway connects into the lot would be the applicants and i do want to make it i guess an adjustment to our application i i had referenced in the application that that would be paved and when we come back for final uh, we move the, the, the proposal on we would like to amend that to keep that gravel. The rest of the road is gravel. The T ought to be gravel, and uh, we had suggested it be paved, but I think gravel would be more appropriate. I think Mr. Fiscalci would agree to that. Uh, but, but geometrically, uh, that's where the T part of the hammerhead, if you call it, would be. And, and then sure. the island would be um, maintained by both the association and the homeowners, since it's shared by both? So, technically, I think, in all honesty, 
the homeowner would maintain that island and mow it, but if it